All right, we are live on all the places. I've got my friends here. So today we are talking about trauma and what does, how does trauma affect or manifest in an aggressive and reactive dog? And believe it or not, it is one of many things that may be affecting your dog in some way that if you just stay focused on the lunging, barking, growling behavior, and you don't really see that as a symptom of something else, you might be spinning your wheels, feeling frustrated, confused, like you've done something wrong because you haven't been able to fix your dog. So let's talk about trauma. But before I do that, let me introduce myself because there's some new folks here with us. I'm Denise Mazzola from Everything Dog. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a certified professional dog trainer. I have been for over 20 years. I was one of the first 500 in the world to become certified through the CPDT. I'm proud of that. And I've been working with dogs and people for 30 years. And I say dogs and people because at the end of every lease is, is a human being. And the vast majority of the time, I am training you to train your dog. Unless my hands are on your dog, I'm not training your dog. I'm training you to train your dog. I'm also the founder of the Revealing Your Dream Dog um, virtual program for aggressive and reactive dogs. Today we are talking about trauma, dog, what trauma your dogs may have experienced um, that is manifesting in aggressive and reactive behavior. You're going to go out. <laughs> she's going to have to leave the show if she's going to keep whining. Um, if what we end up talking about today resonates with you, if you've got light bulbs going on, if you know people, please share um, and like this video so that we can help more people and more dogs because there's a lot of aggression, there's a lot of reactivity out there, and there's a lot of misinformation. Okay, so while she's quiet, I'm going to give her another one for staying on the chair. All right, so let's talk about trauma. Many, many, many times when I am talking to someone on Zoom or in person, they say, oh, you know, my dog hasn't experienced any trauma. I'm like, okay. And then I start doing the history. And sometimes it's as simple as, um, did you attend a puppy class? Oh, yeah, I attended a puppy class. Okay, great. Was there a play session during that class? Yes, there was. Okay. So tell me how your dog behaved during that play session. Oh, well, she spent a lot of time under my chair and really trying to avoid the other dogs. And, um, you know... I guess now that you asked me, I'm, I'm not really sure she was enjoying it. Okay. So depending. Now, now traumas, trauma is one thing, but then we also have to take into account the personality of your dog. So let's just stay with the, with the example I'm giving of um, a puppy group, whether it was a play group or a puppy class, whether it was a play class. And you have a dog that was hiding under the chairs that was not engaged in the other puppies that looked worried. Maybe when the puppy did venture out, too many puppies came over or or the instructor was of the belief that they just let them work it out. So your puppy was essentially being bullied in puppy class. Okay. So for some puppies, for some dogs, that could be a traumatic event. Now, not for, we can't say for every dog because just like... Um, children, you know, um, elementary school kids on the playground, what happened to, what, excuse me, we're going to excuse you from the show. Okay. So just like what I was saying, elementary school kids, uh, you could have, I have three daughters. Let's say they're all on the playground together and um, something, something happens. Somebody gets yelled at. Somebody hurts themselves, not any of them, um, or maybe there's a storm that comes. Each of those children, each of my daughters, will experience that traumatic event differently. And for one of them, it might actually be traumatic, and for the other two, it may not. But it's hard to tell because we've got personality, we have genetics, right? So trauma is, is a issue, but it's not as simple as, no, my dog didn't experience any trauma, or yes, my dog did, because then we sort of have to look at who your dog is as an individual. Because your dog is a living, breathing being who's experiencing the world through their own doggy lens and taking in life's 
experiences. They are taking in this puppy class. So let me go back to the puppy class example. Okay, so Gio here probably could have gone to a puppy class. I'm sure he did not, but he could have. And maybe been bullied a little bit, maybe been chased around by the other puppies. And, you know, he probably would be okay. He's, he's, there's a little anxiety in there, but he's a pretty stable dog. Okay. But a puppy who is already nervous, anxious, maybe genetically nervous and anxious because mom was or dad was or grandma or grandpa was nervous and anxious. Those, those are genetics. Those get passed along as well. Right. So maybe your puppy has some genetics that say that they were nervous and worried. Um, maybe, um, Maybe they're not. Maybe they're just like, hey, I'm just like rocking and rolling. And, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm getting bullied by the other dogs. I'm having a great time. But the, but the, the bigger issue is you're going to leave that puppy class and you're going to say, oh, that was great. Like I socialized my dog and I did this with my puppy. And then as your dog reaches adolescence, 18 months, 15 months, two, two and a half, which is social sexual maturity, we've got developmental stages in there. Now it might be manifesting as reactivity on leash. It might be um, not enjoying people coming to the house, right? It could be that they're barking and lunging at dog parks or not enjoying that either. So how those traumatic experiences manifest later on in your dog's life are hard to predict. So the real goal is to, um, the real goal is Sorry, Amy was going to bring Nancy back in, not knowing I'm alive. Um, the goal when you have a young dog in your socialization journey, and I'm just going to touch on this lightly because, because it, it has to do with trauma, is that you're going to keep your dog safe. You're going to do short, fun sessions. You're going to do a little exposure downtown. You're going to let your dog watch the world from a park bench and you're going to feed him chicken while she's looking at things. You're going to let her, you're going to maybe introduce her to some of your friend's dogs who you know are nice and friendly and won't overwhelm her. Great. That would be a nice socialization. But your job is to prevent trauma from happening if you have a young dog or puppy. Some of your puppies could come to you already traumatized because mom was traumatized because mom was running around somewhere in the south or wherever with no food and no water and new shelter. Everything. And she was hyper aroused. She was worried. She was anxious. That's affecting the puppies in your utero. Maybe those puppies get rescued and they're pulled out from under a porch and mom is emaciated and barely hanging on and they have to be separated from mom and bottle fed and, and whatever. That's a trauma. How that will manifest in your dog as they grow, I, I don't know. But I know that it's a traumatic event and there's a good possibility that it might have a, a manifestation later on that you're going to be like, wow, like I don't know what I've done wrong. I've done all the social, socializing. Everybody's blaming me. And that's, that's why this owner blaming is... For the birds, because so many things have happened to your dog before you even get them into your life. They come sort of carrying their suitcases, ready to it's who mom was, dad was, all that sort of stuff. Okay, so trauma. Trauma could be um, a bad experience in puppy class. Trauma could be um, transported from the south in a van with, I don't know, 50, 100 other dogs barking and screaming, with dark and hot. Who knows? That could be traumatic for some dogs. Your dog could have experienced in utero trauma from a you know dog that wasn't well cared for or, or she was experiencing some trauma. There's, there is many ways that your dog can experience trauma. It could be that you have a four-year-old dog that was recently attacked on a walk you're walking along, you've got your dog on a leash, everything's going great, and boom, you're attacked by some other dog that's off leash and not very nice. And that's a traumatic event. It could easily manifest in that your dog is worried and nervous about um, other dogs approaching them after that one event. It doesn't have to take a lot. And your dog does not need to be physically injured in order to experience trauma that could then show up and manifest as aggressive and reactive. Okay, guys, 
we're getting ready to, to open the doors to our signature program that I was telling you about, Revealing Your Dream Dog. It's a virtual program for aggressive and reactive dogs. We're doing our free live webinar at the end of this month. You need to drop in the comments trauma, and I will send you the wait list link. So the wait list gets you first in line so that when we open registration, you have to watch your email and you will get a registration link so that you can then do that as well. So let's not discount the effects of trauma and how that might manifest in your dog's life in terms of their aggressiveness or reactivity. All right. All right, you guys. I'll see you next week. I'm gonna say goodbye. All right, bye Facebook. And bye YouTube.